Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the last couple of tutorials, I introduced the concept of Dockers. And why do you care about Dockers? Well, you care if you want to make your code or application portable, meaning you want to share your application with someone else so they can easily run it on their machine, or if you even want to deploy this in the servers in the cloud. So today I'm going to talk about taking your code. Let's write a few lines of code in Python and then Dockerize it. Okay. Uh, just a quick reminder. Uh, it all starts with a Docker file, right? I mean, the Docker file contains the set of instructions on how to build a Docker image. And any missing elements are downloaded from the Docker registry. And if you come up with a cool updated image, you can of course push it to the registry so others can benefit from it. But once we have the Docker image, then we can run many containers. Yeah. So this is the concept. So let's start with the Docker file. Okay. And then create an image and then run the container. So this is our uh, agenda for today. So first, let's make sure we have a code that's usable and it works in Python and then uh, start creating our Docker file. And for Python code, I'm going to use a little snippet from the online documentation of scikit image. You can actually Google search for scikit image and non local means denoising filter. And that brings you to this page. And uh, again, this is a great denoising filter. I actually talked about it in the past, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But all I'm going to do is copy a couple of uh, uh, headers from here and then just a single line of denoising, this low algorithm, what they call it. Okay, just this line. And obviously, uh, define, the, define the input parameters here, uh, including the sigma and uh, a couple of other uh, like patch size and patch distance. That's pretty much it. Okay, so in fact, I've already copied that and you can see this in my spider IDE. So here you can see these are the libraries that are required again. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use an input image of uh, Mona Lisa Noisy. And uh, let's see, let me navigate to the directory. So there is my Noisy Mona Lisa uh, picture. And uh, we are going to estimate some uh, uh, sigma like noise and use that as one of the parameters that actually goes into this denoising algorithms. And by the way, this image opened in my other screen. So you can see I kind of, uh, it's a bit of a noisy image and let's clean this image using uh, this little code. So all it's doing is just uh, using the non-local means algorithm and saving it as nlm.jpg. So let's first test if it's actually working. So there you go. Looks like uh, it actually printed out estimated noise standard deviation as 0 0.069. That's the, I guess, the print statement I have over there. And hopefully I should see another image in my directory right here called nlm.jpg. And this should be the cleaned uh, image. And as you can see, it's a bit cleaned. Again, this is a 256 uh, by 256 image so the resolution is not that high but you can actually see uh, uh, that it looks uh, cleaned okay so our code is ready again it's a pretty four or five lines of code here now let's actually run this inside a container meaning let's create a docker container using this code and as I mentioned earlier, it all starts with a docker file so let's actually create a new text document and let's give it a name docker file with uppercase d and now i can open this and let's start adding a few lines in this uh, docker file so oh, it opened it on my other screen let me go ahead and drag it here so the first line typically is your base image repository okay uh, or the base image that you're going to download from the repository. And in this case, let's actually use uh, Python and specify the version number three, meaning when I run this Docker, even in future, when there is Python four or five, it's gonna download this repository Python three. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, base image Python three from the online repository. By the way, if you're curious about what other repositories they actually have, like so you can start with a already a good starting base image, then go to hub.docker.com and actually type exactly whatever you're looking for. So there's a hundreds of uh, thousands, I should say, of Python-based 
uh, uh, images repo uh, inside this repository. And if you, uh, it's not just, I mean, again, you can Dockerize anything, almost anything nowadays. So if you have, uh, for example, image J, uh, you know, uh, container, then uh, you can actually type Fiji or image J. You can just type it here or image J and you can find the uh, base images of some of these. Uh, you know, Fiji, Fiji, and so on. So this is uh, hub.docker.com can be a great place to find the right base image for you. But let's go ahead and start with, where are we? Let's go ahead and start with uh, just the base Python image, okay? So now the next line I would like to add is tell the system what my working directory is. Uh, user, this is pretty common to use user SRC app. And this is not the working directory in your uh, you know, in your Windows system or Linux system. This is the working directory within the Docker virtual environment. So here we can copy all the uh, required files and everything. So think of this as entering another world. This is a uh, virtual environment where uh, we are defining our working directory, okay? So to this working directory, let's copy all the files. So the copy is done by using the copy so command. And first thing first, let's actually copy our Mona Lisa image and let me delete this nlm so we're not confusing ourselves so mona lisa underscore noisy dot jpeg right and oh yes why noisy dot jpg okay and i'm gonna give a space and hit uh, a period uh, right there telling that okay this is the current working directory uh, and by the way, I really do not want to confuse you here and I want to make sure you understand this part. This working directory is the path that we are defining within this Docker virtual environment system. This is where our container is going to be. And in and to that location, I'm going to copy Mona Lisa underscore noisy dot JPEG from my current working directory, which is nothing but, uh, uh, you know, Python file slash Docker slash Docker test. Okay. So I'm gonna copy also the nlm.py file to that location. And uh, I think we are uh, good. So these are the two files that we have here. Now, the base Python file, I'm not sure if it actually has, uh, for example, uh, numpy or scikit image, yeah? So for that, I think it's, uh, it's important to actually uh, pip install these uh, directory, I mean, these uh, dependencies yourself. So one thing you can actually do here is you can actually say run uh, pip install. So it's gonna run this command in the uh, uh, command line prompt. But instead of, uh, for example, in this case, only two libraries, right? Scikit image and numpy. But what if you have like 10 such libraries? Then typically it's easier for you to create another text file. I'm gonna call this, uh, requirements.txt okay requirements.txt and in here i'm going to type all oh sorry again opened in my other so here i'm going to type everything so what do i need i need numpy i also need scikit image so just add all the libraries that you would like to install and by the way please remember to add some sort of a version number. Right now I'm a bit lazy to check what the latest version number is, but please uh, uh, say, okay, 1.4.5, whatever that version number is. Uh, if you specify that, I think you gotta put that, but once you specify the version number, you are ensuring that this Docker actually works even in future when new versions show up, okay? It's kind of like time locking, you know, this uh, uh, these these libraries to a specific version number, so you know that it works anytime. So requirements.txt, I saved it. So instead of run pip install, let's actually go ahead and copy that requirements file also in this location. So let's go back, copy another file called requirements.txt. Period. Okay. So now that we have it, let's go ahead and run pip install, sorry, pip install. Now we need to look at every line in that text file. So just do no cache directory and read the file requirements.txt. Okay, I don't need the period because this is just a run command and not copying anything from the local directory. Okay, so run pip install Okay, I think uh, that looks okay. And finally, what do we want to do? Well, 
we need to execute this. So there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, I'm gonna just use the command CMD, which means it's gonna type this in the command prompt. And what are we gonna type? Type Python to execute the Python file that I'm going to specify right now. Which Python file do we wanna execute? We know that, right? So this is the nlm.py that we just copied. Okay, so this is it. This is your Docker file. So it downloads the base image upon which it's going to build. Okay, and all the other instructions that are actually down here are building on top of this base image. First of all, we are specifying our uh, uh, working directory inside this uh, Docker virtual environment. And into that working directory, we are copying uh, a few files, Mona Lisa underscore noisy dot JPEG. So basically all these three files, right? So Mona Lisa, NLM, and requirements, these three files. And once these are copied, pip install, go to this requirements.txt, read every line, and pip in, run this command called pip install. And after that's done, go ahead and type python space nlm.py so the Docker gets started. That's it. This is how easy to define your Docker file. Now we just need to build the Docker image using the instructions that are provided in this docker file.txt okay so let's close this and before building one thing we absolutely need to make sure is removing this .txt extension i just used it for convenience purposes so i can edit the file easily but when we run the docker build command it's going to look into this specific folder for a file called docker file without any extensions okay so now let's open the command prompt. In this case, I'm using Windows PowerShell because I'm working on Windows and this is a, uh, I find this better than Windows command prompt, okay? So uh, now let's go ahead and type docker build and I'm gonna provide minus T so I can name this file, okay? Uh, what that means is uh, I'm build it with the name NLM, okay? If you don't provide that, then it's gonna build it, of course, but uh, and it gives some default name, okay? And I'm gonna provide this period at the end of it uh, so it knows that it needs to look for that Docker file in the current working directory, okay? So let me go ahead and hit return and now it should first download Python 3, set instruction number one, step number two is this, step number three, copying this, all of those steps are done and now it's actually running this pip install which is usually the slowest uh, component. Okay, uh, especially if you have a whole bunch of libraries that need installing. By the way, it's slow for the first time. The second time you run this Docker, it should be faster because you already have those requirements met. There you go. It's uh, successfully built. Now let's clear the screen to make sure it's uh, so we can focus. Now let's actually type docker space images to see if our image is listed here. You see NLM, the one that we just created, and here is the image ID and created 15 seconds ago, okay? And the size is 1.22 GB because it's got Python 3 and it's got all the dependencies in there. So we are uh, ready to actually run this. So the way to run is again docker run, that's it. And I'm gonna provide again a couple of arguments here and uh, which container are we running? It's called NLM, right? So the, this is the one that we are trying to run and let's go ahead and run it. There you go, it's done. You see it's printing out our estimated noise standard deviation, which is should be exactly the same that we got earlier, 0 0.069 something something. 0.069, there you go. So it should be pretty much the same, right? It's working on the same uh, uh, on the same uh, image. Now, so uh, where is our final output image? And in fact, if first of all, let's go ahead and type Docker. Uh, uh, how do we check this? Uh, in fact, uh, let's check this. But first of all, let's actually check it. Uh, I just want to see how our Docker container is. By the way, to check a Docker, all the Docker containers, just type Docker PS minus A. So this is the container ID and our image name is NLM and uh, command 46 uh, seconds ago. And in fact, if I expand this, one thing I would like to show you is look at the name of this container. It's called priceless, whatever that thing is. 
let's run this again actually let's run this uh, well actually uh, let me uh, let's not waste time running it again you got the point but here if you see uh, the name is some weird name because it just assigns a default name I, while running it I haven't provided an actual name to this so the way we can do that is uh, provide name okay uh, actually let's not confuse so uh, docker run minus ti okay and uh, name and let's just give some my first nlm docker okay oh, actually this is a container so let's just say my first nlm container and we are running this nlm that's pretty much it so when we run it this time it should assign this name uh, my first nlm container rather than priceless whatever that thing is yeah so now let's go ahead and look at this docker ps minus a now we should have two containers both containers again remember from one image you can create any number of containers so here are the two containers that are running and uh, uh, one is called whatever that uh, default name is and the second one we actually provided a name so we can easily look at it and identify what it is okay so these are uh, the containers now the question is where do i look at the cleaned image well the cleaned image is inside that virtual environment that's why i really don't like to run it that way so for uh, to to make it easy for if you want to place your output images into the same a directory that you're working under then the best way to do that is to map your local directory or volume let's say to the volume or directory inside this container so the way you do that is docker run okay now I'm going to provide uh, a minus V tag and this tag tells the system that okay we are now mapping the volume and my current directory I'm gonna just copy that okay and paste it here okay so this is the directory where I would like my results to be stored and you know where this one is right user src app we defined this in our docker file and what do we want to run nlm so now let's go ahead and run it and open this docker test folder to keep an eye on it and hopefully we should see our nlm.jpg file any moment now There you go. So now it placed it in the current working directory. So in a nutshell, this is how you can create your own Docker container, uh, I mean image, and uh, create your containers using the Python code. Now, all I need to do is, if I wanna deploy this, if I wanna share this with someone else, I just need to share this entire folder contents, which is basically these three files or four files with someone else. And if they have Docker, they should be able to run it without any issue. And also, of course, you can upload this to the cloud and uh, uh, run this in the cloud if you want. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you a, uh, a platform, online platform called Appear, uh, www.apeer.com and uh, uh and, and uh, which is designed for microscopy type of applications and how to take this container and then actually deploy it in this uh, free cloud-based uh, platform so please stay tuned for the next tutorial and i really hope you uh, found this tutorial to be useful so thank you very much